Bills, please listen to the rules and procedures that will follow for tonight's meeting. Good evening, and welcome to tonight's meeting of the Town of Babylon Zoning Board of Appeals. The following is the procedure that will be followed tonight. The matters will be called in the order they appear on the calendar, with adjourned matters being called at the end of the regularly scheduled matters. Matters cannot be heard prior to their published scheduled time. When your matter is called, please submit the affidavit of posting to the secretary and proceed to the podium and give your name and address. The chairperson will then swear you in and read into the record information we have from your application, comments from various town departments, and any correspondence received on your application. The chairperson will then ask you to make whatever presentation you wish to make to the board. After you have made your presentation, the board will ask whatever questions the board deems appropriate, and then we will ask for comments from the public. If you wish to speak for or against an application, we ask that you wait until you're acknowledged. Come forward, give us your name and address, tell us where your property is in relation to the property that's in question tonight, and then please direct your comments to the board, not the applicant or the applicant's representative. We have to keep a record, and we cannot do that if there are people talking over each other or cross conversations. If someone has spoken for or against an application, and they have said exactly the same thing that you wish to say, it will have the same force and effect in the record if you give your name and address, are sworn in, and say that you join in those comments. If you have anything additional to say, please don't hesitate to do so, but keep in mind that you will be given only one opportunity to speak. After the public has spoken, the board may ask the applicant to come back to answer any questions that may have come up as a result of the public comments, or for the applicant to summarize. When the applicant comes back to answer any additional questions, if that happens, that does not start a second round of public comments. Once the matter has been heard, various things may occur. The board may decide the application immediately. It may reserve decision. If the board reserves decision, that does not mean the matter is approved or denied. It just means that the board needs more time to decide, may want to go out and look at the site again, or might want to review the documents and testimony further before making a decision. In either event, the applicant will receive the board's decision in writing shortly after the board makes its decision. If the application is approved, that does not mean that you can then go ahead and start construction or whatever it is that you requested from the board. You will have to wait for the building permit to be obtained from the building department before your go ahead. On some occasions, the matter may be continued for another night. If it is continued, in most cases, it will be for the submission of documents, a new survey, new plans, or something of that nature. If that's the case, no one needs to come back on the new date. The documents will be submitted and no further testimony will be taken. On rare occasions, a matter may be continued for future testimony. If that's the case, then people would have to come back to testify. If matters are adjourned at an open meeting on the scheduled date of hearing, no further notice need be given unless specifically required by the board on the date the adjournment is granted. Three rules that may affect your ability to proceed tonight. One, if the sign was not posted for 10 days, we cannot hold the hearing tonight. Two, if you commence this proceeding while you own the property, but no longer own the property, and you are here now to continue with the application, you will need either the written consent of the new owner or the new owner to be present for the hearing. This situation could come about if you sold your house or building, money was held in escrow at closing for a certificate of occupancy or permit, and you're here tonight to clear that up. Lastly, if your application is a commercial application, and it's other than a renewal, and there is more than one tenant in the building, then you need your landlord to be here. Is there any applicant that has any difficulty with those situations and would need an adjournment tonight? Is there anyone that would need an adjournment? Please rise and join the board in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with
First applications, application 23037 of Jonathan Metellus, property located in Wheatley Heights. No, you gotta go up by the podium. Just need your name and address for the record, please. Jonathan Metellus, uh, 4 Manchester Boulevard, Wheatley Heights, New York, 11798. Okay, do you affirm to tell the truth? Yes. For the record, we have a planning division memo dated April 12, 2023. Biomental control memo dated uh, April 17, 2023. If approved, this application will not result in significant impact. A survey by Jan John Ambruso dated uh, October 3rd, 2022. Tax map acting as an area map and? Chairman, okay, we have eight photographs. Okay. Would you like to tell us about the application? Yes. Uh, last year I had a semi pool, semi in-ground pool installed in my home. I followed all the town guidelines. I got the electrician. I actually got the fires underwriters insurance from the electrician. I uh, went to the correct depth, everything. Uh, there was a slight oversight because I never had a pool installed. My fence line from my neighbor is not on my property line. So we measured six feet away from the fence instead of six feet away from the property line, resulting in the pool being installed two feet too close to the property line. It was a slight oversight, it was my mistake, and the pool company didn't inform me. I did not know the, the rule. I never had anything done to my home, so this is my first time. So the pool is not in the correct spot in relation to the property line because of the oversight. But everything else by town guidelines was completely followed and I did apply for a permit before I started all work and I followed every single step. Just at the end when we went for the survey, we realized there was a mistake. I spoke to the neighbor, he has no issue with it. He has no plans on moving the fence and uh, the pool's already in there. Okay, so you talk to your neighbor about it? Yes. That's a big deal. Okay, so it's really just uh it's four feet, and like you said, if it, uh, you measured it to the fence, that's why you're ending up where you are. Um, would you agree to a condition that if the pool ever had to be taken down, it was in disrepair, it would be put back in a legal location? In a legal location, yes, it would move, yes. If it's in disrepair, just put this pool up, right? So it's- Yes. It should be a while. <laughs> okay. Um, I have no further questions. Any other questions from the board? Would anyone like to be heard on this application? For the record, there are none. Okay. okay, I make a motion to approve application 23037. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, with a condition that if the pool has to ever come down, that it be rebuilt in a conforming location. Second. All in favor? Aye. Good luck. Thank you very much. Next application is application 23033 of Ulysses Martinez, property located in Copeg. Need your name and address, please. Um, my name is Ulysses uh, Reyes. Uh, I have Martinez, uh, is uh, the other owner, but as I have an emergency right now, that's why it's not here. So um, you're an owner also? Yeah. Um, and um, right. another thing. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna need your name, so, and could you spell it out for us? We have it? Never mind, we have it, that's fine, thank you. And um, I have my, my cousin over here because I don't understand too much uh, English, so any question? Okay, so, so have, have step up. I just need name and address. You need your name and address also. Okay, uh, my name is Nelson Sanchez. There is a 315 uh, Cedar Court, Copier, New York, 11726. Okay, and you both affirm to tell the truth? Yes, yeah. sir. Okay, for the record, we have a planning division memo dated April 12, 2023. Uh, environmental control memo dated April 17, 2023. If approved, this application will not result in significant impact. A survey by Lawrence Michael Haynes, last dated June 25th, 2002. 2002? No, last dated June 15, 2022. Tax map acting as an area map and? Chairman, we have nine photographs. Okay, what would you like to tell us about the application? What would, you get, what would you like to tell us about the application? Yeah. 
quiere hablar algo respecto a la, a la aplicación? Well, he did the staff present because he don't know the rules, he don't know anything when he did it, the letter for go downstairs because Frost, Frost House, he get it for him and he don't know anything about it. So he thought it's not gonna be a problem and he won a regulation for, for the staff. Okay. Uh, all right, uh, I'll turn the hearing over to Mr. Delavecchia. When did you guys construct the cellar entrance and the egress window? Uh, in Kefecha, in Enero, well, Enero. in January. Of this year? Uh, yes. And what happened? Someone reported you guys for the construction? He said, I yes, because when he come home, he find an orphan door and the town hall, he stopped and he left. He said, he need to call this number and and he started, <coughs> he started the process. Is there a kitchen in the basement? No, it's nothing in there. No kitchen? No. What is it, just a bathroom? Just um, a bathroom, playroom. Laundry room? Oh, and laundry room, yes. Okay. Is there any way to move it to the rear of the house? Or no, not really, right? Not, it's not really to it can move because the other side is the broiler things and all the pipes and things in there. There's no way to I can move it out to another location. Yeah, I mean, I can't see it from the front of the house. You guys put a new fence up, right? Is that fence new? No, that fence is already there when he bought the house. Okay. Um, if we were to approve it, would you guys agree that the back deck not be further enclosed above, below, sides? That one, she says, is gonna remove. You're gonna it's, remove the it's deck? It's gonna mm -hmm. remove, he's saying, whatever is, because you're talking about, but the, the deck, the extensions he had beside the garage, she says, he's gonna, he's gonna remove everything and leave it the way it's supposed to be. So then we can delete variance number four? Okay, you're definitely gonna remove, what are you guys gonna put back, nothing? Excuse me? What are you gonna replace it with? Anything or no? Just nothing. It's yeah. not gonna. Kind of goes off the deep end of the house. Okay. It doesn't get as much deep as it would be if it was deep in the ground. Okay, so we, repeat, we can delete number four? Number four. I make a motion to delete variance number four on application 23-033. Second. All in favor? Aye. You guys live there, both of you? Both, yeah. In the garage, uh, whatever she had in that garage is ready there when you bought the house. The house is like uh, 67 years old. The thing is full pot ready. The deck you have it in there, it's not like it's something new. I don't know why it's come out or something like that. You know, after 60 something years and they're already well, there. That's because the variance changed a number of years ago, not when it was built. So that's the reason. Um, well, so you built the cellar entrance that wasn't there yeah, before. That's, when, that's what triggered it. <laughs> once you guys built the cellar entrance and the egress window, that's, the, that's what brought all of this up. Um, you have to file for permits when you do work. Or if you don't know, just call and figure out if you do need a permit for any type of work. Okay. Okay. Any other questions from the board? No. Would anyone like to be heard on this application? For the record, there are none. Okay. Yep. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve application 23-033 as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Um, he said about the, mo the thing is gonna move for the garage. Is he had a time for that, how long he, t he gave it to him to remove everything? To remove the deck? Yeah, go. Well, you're gonna have to do that before you're gonna get the building permit and stuff because it can't be issued because we took the variance off. Okay. So, before everything's finalized, that's gotta be removed. Okay, thank you. Thanks. You're welcome, have a good night.
Next application is application 22212 of Ronald Hernandez, property located in Copeg. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, that's under Corporation ROHM Corp and 2095 Greenick Road. Uh, Ronald Hernandez. Okay. And your address? 20, 2095 Greenick Road. Okay. Do you affirm to tell the truth? Yes. For the record, we have a planning division memo dated April 12th, 2023. Environmental control memo dated uh, April 17th, 2023. If approved, this application will not result in significant impact. Survey by Barry Farr dated October 7th, 2022. Tax map acting as an area map. And Chairman, we have 19 photographs. 16 photographs. Okay, what would you like to tell us about the application? What would you like to tell us? Oh, um, I'm sorry. I was running around the building trying to find the door. Uh, uh, first, uh, I'm trying to see if I can get everything approved. You know, I can get the building permits and I can keep everything according to the law. So, that's why, because I know I'm like 50 feet uh, uh, out of the uh, of the code, so just we are trying to see if we can get those 57 feet in, uh, and, and we can finalize this and get the working permit. Also, if if you see. Uh, uh, looks like the town is uh, is according to what I read. They are saying that I did the extension like an L, which uh, is not uh, true because one part of the L uh, was there already. So I have some pictures, so you can see it was like a part. I did the back and also a little bit of the uh, left side, but not the whole L. So who did the rest of it? Well, it was the original house. I have some pictures here if, if you want to see them. Sure, if you want to submit that one, I'm happy to take them. I'll turn the hearing over to Mr. Delavecchia. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. So you didn't do the L shape, right? It was a, you did a rectangle addition? Well, I did it back a little bit. It was like six feet across, but also on the left side, I did in like... In the front? Uh, no, nothing up front. Well, I could see the gray siding in one of these photographs. Um, The gray siding is because I was trying to put siding in the entire house. Okay. And then I got the stop order and, you know, I didn't continue. But definitely I want to put the siding because that's an old uh, brick thing I don't yeah. really like, yes. Because currently you got three different facades on it. You got the brick, the siding, the mm -hmm. stucco. But eventually, as if I get the uh, the working permit, uh, everything will yeah. be uh, siding. You're going to you're gonna side brick? this house? Uh -huh. Over the brick? Yes. Oh, I see on the one photograph you had two back doors. What were the reason for the two back doors? Uh, I know it's been removed since then, but... One was moved, yes, because one was for the first floor in the kitchen and the other one was for the basement, so I eliminated the one for the basement, so I just kept the one for the uh, kitchen, and I made the, like, uh, I was using that entrance just for both, for the basement and also for the first floor. So one is eliminated already. So you, you're 
trying to make this a two-family rental no, property? No, no. Just, uh, it's a rental, but it's one family. So not two family, just no. one? What was the need for the expansion on the rear? Because the first floor doesn't have a bathroom. And no bathroom? No, no bathroom. And that's what I did the extension because I needed, you know, the bathroom. And, uh, and, you know, I said it didn't make sense just to have the uh, five by seven and I did the whole pack, which I'm planning to have like a laundry room on one side and, eventually, and the rest is just for the uh, entrance. Where's the primary bathroom located? Second okay. floor. There's no other dish. How many kitchens? Just one just kitchen? Just one kitchen. Where, and where is that located? That's on the first floor. First floor. Mm -hmm. What's in the basement? Nothing. Storage use only? Yes. You're not putting a bathroom down there, nothing? I'm trying to apply for a bathroom. Eventually, if they allow me, if they don't allow me, yes. But if not, just. What about for, would you, be, would you agree to storage use only? Yes. And utilities, whatever? Exactly, right. Um, I seen that you had a schedule inspector inspection on September 1st. Mm -hmm. That was not completed, correct? September 1st? Of 2022? Uh, inspection failed for no answer? I, every, I, I don't know about that one, but every single time the inspector went there and I went with them. Would you agree to uh, another inspection? Absolutely. Because what I'm trying to do with it is, you know, to have a bathroom on the first floor because it's, I think, was built in 1926. And yeah. yeah. So there's nothing else except a bathroom in this extension? Bathroom, and also there was a small room at the corner. And, you know, I was doing the bathroom, and I just add like, uh, like five footers to the other room. That's why I did the, the L to the existing, if you see on the left side, there was like a room, and then I just put the like five footers behind it. If you see the pictures that you have over there, the one I gave you, that's the extension that I did on the, to the uh, existing room that was there. Because what happened, the house didn't have any bedrooms or nothing on the first floor, and uh, it was like an open, uh, living room, and I was trying to make at least one bedroom. Three bedrooms, right? This house, three bedroom house. Yes, uh, yes, and that's what I was trying to add <coughs> one on the first floor. So it's a three bedroom, two bathroom house. Uh huh. Yes. Single family. Yes. With no bedroom. With no bathroom on the first floor, and I was uh, that's what I was trying to come up with. Any other questions from the board? Would anyone like to be heard on this application? The record, there are none. We are going to close the hearing. We're going to reserve decision. You'll get the decision in the mail. All right. Thank okay. you so much. Okay.
where are you going to send the uh, decision to this specific address or to my? To so send it to whatever address you have on file. See where right? Okay, yeah. that's fine, my house, okay. Thank you, so I can leave, right? You can go. Oh, you can go, thank you. Take care, bye-bye. Next application is application 22156 of Naji Sharai, property located in West Babylon. Hi, my name is Naj Sharai, 191 Young Street, West Babylon, New York, 11704. Okay. Ma'am? My name is Adila Sharai Halimi, I'm his daughter. Uh, my address is 36 West 18th Street, Huntington Station, New York. Okay. And you're both? A D I L A. And do you both affirm to tell the truth? Yes. For the record, we have a planning division memo dated April 12, 2023. Biomental control memo dated April 17, 2023. If approved, this application will not result in significant impact. The survey by Michael Minto dated May 4, 2022. <coughs> Tax map acting as an area map. Airman, there's one photograph. What would you like to tell us about the application? The shed uh, is almost there for almost 20 years. So we want to keep the shed. We bought, it was there when we bought the house. Yeah, so when he came in last, he came in for the shed um, mm -hmm. because they had had an issue with it. Um, but when we purchased, when he purchased the home uh, over 10 years ago, um, it was already there. We didn't place it there. Um, and then I, when he had came last time for the shed, they had also mentioned, asked about two doors um, instead of there being one. Um, again, when we purchased the home, it was already like that. Um, there was, there's no major con structural changes that we've made. Um, in reference to the shed, the two doors, um, and yeah. And the, the deck. Oh, mm -hmm. and, and the, what is it called? The deck. Mm -hmm. The deck. Um, and the reason for the purchase of this home uh, for my father uh, was that second house, accessory apartment, um, <coughs> being a source of income for him, and kind of trying to get rid of that would kind of get in the way of that. Um, so yeah. Oh, where are we here? <coughs> no, <laughs> Ms. McCullough. Um, okay, so where is the accessory apartment located in the house? On the right side. On the right the side. The right so, door. Yeah. Okay, so that door, so when you go into one door, it's one apartment and the other door is another apartment? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's a problem. Um, is there any access to the apartment inside the house? No. No. That's a problem. Um, what about access to the apartment through the back door? Do you guys have a back door? No. 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 So there's no back door on e there's no back door in either apartment. Uh, the first uh, the first floor, which is my uh, house, is a uh, sliding door to the backyard. Sliding door. Okay, so the accessory apartment is on the it's on the, the second top. floor. Yeah. yeah. So that door goes straight to stair, a stairway? Yes. <coughs> okay. We need the door removed and we need access from one unit to the other unit so internally. The, so the apartments would have to have access to each other? Yes. Okay. Yeah. How would that work with if there's other people living there? Well, it's an accessory apartment, so it's supposed to be, it's just a door. It doesn't have to be um, open. Yeah. It's not a segre segregated two-family home. Yeah, it's not it's a two-family home. It's an accessory apartment, so the accessory apartment needs 
internal access from one apartment to the other, from the primary to the secondary. Okay. Um, okay. If there was access in between both of them, is it still okay to have the two doors just because having all that construction done financially is a lot and my father's disabled, it's not something he can do. Um, I don't know, maybe a door he can do, but that's all stuff was there before and financially it's not something he can afford to make all those, all that construction, it's a lot. <laughs> So and all of my question is, if there is access, let's say we put a door in between um, of that little, there's like a little very small hallway, right? When you open the door to the right side, if there was a door in between, can we still keep the two doors out here? Because that one door probably wouldn't, I don't know how much that would cost, but getting rid of all of that with these two doors combined into one um, would be a lot, of financially a lot that we can't handle. So was all of this, when you bought, when did you buy the house? Uh, 2013. <coughs> yeah. So 10 years ago. Yeah, this was all there. Everything was, that That was my yeah, next question. I have, I have that proof too, yeah. When MLS put it under, under, the, uh, under there in MLS, so that time I have that picture from the Zillow that was already there. So I have all the pictures when they put on the, on the on parcel, so already were there. Yeah, so and, uh, they had a permit for everything. I don't know how they pass it, how the, the front uh, patio is a permit for that. So how they pass all that, I don't know. Were you the represented by council when you bought the house? Did you have a lawyer when you bought the house? Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, he checked everything. He checked all the permits, everything. He said everything is fine. Mm -hmm. did, you, did the house have two kitchens when you bought it? Uh, yeah, two kitchens. Did. One upstairs, one downstairs. So Akashi apartment has the kitchen. And we have permit for the Akashi apartment. And have you been renting that out since you moved in? Mm. The accessory apartment, have you been applying for that, renewing it since yeah, you've been yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I, every two years I'm applying for the permit. And, and nobody it came up. That it came up now? Were you renewing the accessory apartment permit now? And that's why this came up? Yeah. So they, they, they renew it every two years, right? After a couple of years, they came in and see all this stuff. Before was nothing. I mean, they came before and they inspect the house. When the first time I got uh, to the house, so the permit was there. I got a permit. They check and inspect everything. Did not say anything. The second time, did not say anything. The third time when they came in, they said, oh, to do. Oh, two days we guys mentioned over here when the last hearing I was here, and you guys asked me it's two doors. I say yes. So the two doors are always there. But yeah, it was brought up for they came in to uh, look at the accessory apartment because um, he was getting the permit, like renewing it. Um, and at that time, that's when they looked at, I believe, the shed and came into the shed, um, and then that time of the hearing, they asked further more about the door and then there was the issue with the door. So just one thing after yeah. the other. <laughs> All right, um, do you agree if approved, um, if the shed is ever taken down or to be replaced that it's built in a conforming location? Yeah, do you understand what that means? No. They're saying if, if you ever take down the shed, um, the next time would you put it in the proper place? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you put the shed there? Work with us. <laughs> Did you put the shed there? Was the shed there when you the bought it? It was there. It was there. Okay. Yeah, it was there. Yeah. Boy, we got a whole hard class. I didn't touch anything. I mean, yeah. I don't know why this didn't come up after ten years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any other questions from the board? Would anyone like to be heard on this application? For the record, there are none. We're going to close the hearing. We're going to reserve decision. You'll get the decision in the mail, okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Stachalik, property located in Lindenhurst. And I'm sure I butchered that. <coughs> Name and address for the record, please. Uh, Avenue Stachalak, 236 Palmers Avenue, Lindenhurst. Ma'am, uh, sir. Zolosuski, 115 North 5th Street in Lindenhurst. Okay. And do you He's both my affirm? friend, so I he's going to explain it. Because I don't speak English very well. That's fine. So. Okay. You both affirm to tell the truth? For the record, we have a planning division memo dated uh, April 13, 2023, biomethyl control memo dated April 17, 2023. If approved, this application will not result in significant impact. Survey by Ward Brooks dated May 10, 2022, tax map acting as an area map. And Remember, we have eight photographs. Okay, and I have a, a letter uh, in opposition to subdividing the property from Jennifer. Oh, wrong one. Oh, we're on five. Never mind. <laughs> How did I get there? Okay. Uh, and you guys got anything else? We have five photographs. Okay. What'd you like to tell us about the application? Well, during the construction, uh, they changed the plans and the inspector come over but the architect never filed the plan to the town. Uh, with the roof. The, the new the plan bathroom. with the roof. And also uh, uh, about the patio, because it's like more patio. I didn't know it's my first house, so I didn't know it's some percentage between the grass and patio. I just try to, you know, make nice. Okay, I'll turn the hearing over to Mr. Rigney. Very nice home, thank you, very nice. A um, few questions, um, because your, your lot coverage, you're older with the pavers, you pretty much cycle them out, would you be willing to cut back any? We did a little bit because it was also like uh, too close to the, the, fence. Uh, the fence, so we did are some. So we already cut it back. Are you two feet off your property in line right now with the pavers? Two feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Might be. Looks like. <coughs> Would you agree not to further enclose the patio, the, the portico over your back door, the front and back? Would you agree not to enclose that? The overhangs over the doors, front and rear? Would you not enclose them? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You would agree to that? Also, the fence, do you know that you're over your property line by 3.3 feet? You're actually on the neighbor's property? The no. Fence. Which, which side? The rear fence. Rear. The, 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 rear side. the backyard. You're over your property line by 3.3 .3 feet. Just so you know. Two feet to your fish. The fence was ever in disrepair <coughs> or had it come down? No, they didn't change nothing. They, you know. That is not a fence from the back of the neighbor. It's behind her fence. Well, according to the survey, it shows that you're older. Just let me know. So if the fence ever had to be replaced, would you agree to bring it back to 3.3 yeah. feet onto your side? Yeah. Any other questions from the board? Would anyone like to be heard on this application? For the record, there are none. Uh, we're going to close the hearing. We're going to reserve decision. You'll get the decision in the mail. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice house. Next application, oh, these, these are two applications together, uh, six and seven. Application 23038A, 
and 23038B of Joseph Espinal, properties located in Copeg. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, Nicole Blanda. I'm an attorney at Bazell Blanda and Visconti with offices at 535 Broad Hollow Road in Melville. Okay, for the record, we have a planning division memo on application on the A application dated April 13th, 2023. Uh, we also have an environmental control memo dated April 18th, 2023. This would need a negative declaration were we to approve it. On the B application, we have a planning memo also dated April 13th, 2023. The same environmental control memo and also the negative declaration. We have a survey by William Simmons on the A application dated 117.22. On the B application, also by William Simmons, also dated 117.22. We have an overall application uh, survey. I'm William Simmons, also dated 117.22. Tax map acting as an area map and? I mean, we have two photographs. Okay, what would you like to tell us about the application? Um, so, Mr. Chairman, I'm here tonight on behalf of the applicant, Jose Espinal, um, in connection with variances for this proposed two-lot subdivision. Um, a couple of things from the outset before I get into the um, application. We are going to amend to delete variance number two regarding the shed. Um, the owner and applicant are willing to remove the shed completely, so that would eliminate the need for that variance. That's on the A on, app. On the A application. On the application. Okay. Number two. I'll make a motion to delete uh, variance number two to diminish the real lot line from six to 2.3 for a shed. Second. All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Um, the second thing I just want to quickly address, um, I do see in the memo, and I found this out seven hours ago, that there was a summons issued to the um, apparently to the owner, although he says he doesn't have it, um, on March 27th. So I do understand that um, the owner will have to clear up and resolve that summons. Um, it looks like he's due in court May 12th. I can address some of the issues based on my conversation with him, but again, I understand that the board um, may not be able to vote the application until you know that he is in compliance and has resolved the, that summons. Um, I did submit some additional photos uh, to the board so that you can see what the property looks like as of today, um, and that will address some of these. Um, there is no carport there any longer, so I know one of the violations <coughs> allegedly was that there was a carport. Um, that has been removed. You can see it on the aerial behind you, but the photos that I have handed up will show that it's gone, that there's no trailer in front of the property, there are no vehicles parked in the rear yard. Um, and I know nothing about a business from the residents. I, I just can't speak to it because like I said, I, I just found this out today um, within the memo. So I'm going to address the subdivision application and then um, the other issues, if the record gets left open, I can always write a letter and let you know how they've been resolved. Um, so this parcel is an oversized parcel at just over 15,000 square feet. It's in the residence C zone. It is currently improved with an existing two-story residence with an attached garage and the shed that we are now uh, seeking to remove. Um, we would also be removing the attached garage uh, to allow for the, um, the additional lot. And the planning memo does ask whether or not we would extend the driveway. Um, if needed or if wanted, the applicant is willing to extend the driveway, the concrete driveway that you see, um, to further back where the garage um, will be removed if that's something that is um, requested. They have no objection to doing that. Um, the owner purchased this property back in September of 2021. At that time, there was an accessory apartment permit on file. However, it was never renewed because I'm told he did remove the second kitchen. So there was no need to have the accessory um, apartment permit. And they do understand and consent to the house going to be single family dwelling, owner occupied with no accessory apartments. Um, 
as I said, we will look into the summonses and clear up those violations because obviously that's now pending in district court. Uh, for proposed lot one, that is the existing dwelling. We're proposing it to remain. Um, the lot area on that one would still be oversized at 8,603.7 square feet. That is over 7,500 square feet, which is what is required by residency. Uh, we need two variances for that lot. Um, their existing conditions, one would be the front yard setback um, on Catskill from 30 to 29.7, obviously extremely minor, and then the second is to diminish the distance to front lot line from 40 feet to 23.7 for that concrete platform, which is really what I would call, I guess, a stoop. Um, it's not really a porch, it's somewhere in between, but it's the, you could see it on the photo of the um, <coughs> dwelling. Um, for lot two, the applicant is proposing a new single family dwelling, which would have four bedrooms and three baths. Um, we were asked about the labeling of one of the rooms on the second floor as a loft. Normally a loft is higher up than the second floor. I'm told that it was just a mislabeling. They're not intending on going higher than the second floor. So we will submit a revised floor plan showing that that room is really designated as either an office or a playroom. It is not a loft. Um, we are proposing a lot area of 6,443.3 square feet um, and also seeking to diminish the front property line from 75 feet to 64.33 feet. The rear yard variance is only to the Bilko style cellar entrance, seeking to diminish from 30 feet to 24 and a half feet. The remainder of the rear yard complies fully with the 30 foot setback and we meet the side yard setbacks. Um, if we look at the surrounding area, immediately to the south of the premises is a 50 by 100, 5,000 square foot parcel that is improved with a dwelling. Immediately to the west of the existing dwelling um, is uh, fronts on 30th Street and there's also a 50 by 100 foot lot with an existing dwelling. If you go around the corner on 29th Street to the west are two lots that appear to have been created by subdivision in 1994 those are lots 59.3 and 58.2. Each of those are 63 by 100, so they're 6,300 square feet, which is just shy of the new lot that we're asking for. So basically every lot that actually touches our property is smaller than what we're proposing and we're maintaining a larger parcel um, as well. I know that the board is interested in precedent and so I took a look at the radius map and the next largest lot um, is within 500 feet and it's tax lot 45.1, but that lot is 125 by 100. So it's a completely distinguishable application. It would be two smaller lots. The house is right in the center. So they would have to go down the middle and those would be two 62 footers, which is a very different application than what we are here on tonight. Um, so again, with the owner consents to all covenants and restrictions, so we would be we would know that both dwellings would be single family with no accessory apartments and owner occupied. Um, it is an, an attractive new dwelling that would go there. Um, we do understand that there are some changes that we need to make uh, to the floor plan and resubmit. And as I said, I would, you know, once we resolve the summonses, um, and you can see on the photos that I think three out of the four things are, have already been resolved or removed. Um, hopefully we're in good shape at that point. If the board has any questions, I'm happy to answer. Turn the hearing over to Mr. Delavecchia. Um, first question, when was the carport um, removed? Supposedly within the last month or so. Um, as, uh, as of four hours ago, it was still there. As of four hours ago, it was still yeah. there? Okay. I think they were in the process of removing it. Okay. But it was still up okay. four hours ago. Okay. Um, does lot one have a basement currently? I believe it does. And there's no water issues? None that I'm aware of, no. Um, because due to uh, groundwater data, basement at lot two may be problematic. Right, we hit groundwater at 10 feet, um, so we'll certainly take a look at that. Obviously, nobody wants to have a flooded basement. You know, they would waterproof properly, but I'll certainly yeah. talk to um, DEC if they have any questions. Okay, and then um, if you guys are removing the garage at lot one. Right? Correct. What are you guys planning on doing with that area once it's removed? Well, like I said, um, the memo had asked if we would extend the driveway. I didn't know if that meant that was a request 
And if no, it, it is, it doesn't have to be. I was just curious. It's not a request. Okay, no, then I'm just I curious what your plans were for that area. They could grass it over um, and, and landscape it over there, um, and just end the driveway where it ends now. It was just a little ambiguous in the memo. Mm -hmm. And um, they're both going to be single families. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Is the current owner going to live in the current house? Right now, his brother is living there. So the intention is for the brother to purchase it. That's what the brother wants to do. So he would be the owner, owner-occupied. If that doesn't work out, then he knows he'd have to sell it, and it has to be owner-occupied. So what's, what was the reason for what is like a mini parking lot, like a, a cutout over there, and as you, know, you can see the, Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Um, I don't know if it has something to do with why they got a summons for an alleged business, I really don't know. Um, I haven't been able to talk to the brother who's living there, but the property owner is telling me that he doesn't have a copy of the ticket or the summons, so I can't read what the actual accusations are. Okay. And what year did they purchase the property? Uh, 2021. So uh, the carport looks, I mean, the parking lot looks like it's older than, you know, two years, so. Um. And it is a parking lot, so, you know, I mean, that's, Stops and everything else there. So, I mean, you know, it's definitely like, looks like four spaces for every commercial. Well, uh, I mean, that's conjecture. Sometimes people want extra parking because of the people living in the house. I really don't know. <laughs> but there's no drainage, there's no dry wells. <coughs> but it would be gone if there was a new house there. This is true. There we go. <coughs> We have to amend application at A. We did already. Just the wording no, on, on the one. On connection there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> Where? Here. Okay, so it's A and B. I make a motion to amend application 23-038A um, on one parcel proposed for Proposed for subdivision. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the same thing on the B. <coughs> same thing for B. Okay. <coughs> I make a motion to amend application 23-038B to add Belco style basement entrance on subdivided parcel. Second. Ava? Aye. Yeah, we have to hold it. Yeah. Any noted of correspondence for this application? Okay. Item three. So there's a, a letter in, in opposition to the application from Jennifer Lavera. <coughs> she lives at uh, 29th Street in Copeg. <coughs> No, I don't. You want me to take it? Okay. Would anyone like to be heard on this application? For the record, there are none. We're going to close the hearing. We're going to close the hearing. We're going to keep the record open for further correspondence. Okay. From Ms. Thank Landon. you. Okay. Yes, I get it. Thank Thanks. you.
Next application is application 23039 of Cambridge Stone, Inc., property located in Farmingdale. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, Nicole Blanda. I'm an attorney at Bazell Blanda and Visconti with offices at 535 Broad Hollow Road in Melville. Okay. For the record, we have a planning division memo dated April 13, 2023. Environmental control memo dated April 19, 2023. If this application were to be approved, it would need a negative declaration. Uh, uh, fire marshal's report, I think we just received that, right? Yes, but it refers to inspections from back in, yeah, I think, November. November right? Yep, okay, all right, so we received the fire marshal's report. And that is dated, Oh, April 20th, 2023, above location has open violations. See Fire Marshal's report. You have a copy of this, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, I can get out of here. We have a survey by Robert Holtzman, dated November 17th, 2011. Tax map acting as an area map and? Chairman, we have four photographs. What would you like to tell us about this application? I'm here tonight on behalf of the applicant, Cambridge Stone, Inc., uh, which is a tenant in this industrial building. We are seeking the very first special permit to allow stone cutting here at the premises. Um, the premises is located on the north side of Conklin Street, about 1,000 feet west of Broad Hollow Road. It is in an industrial or commercial area, and it is industrially zoned. Um, it does back up to the LIRR. Um, the overall site is quite large. It has approximately 219,000 square feet. The Cambridge unit occupies 5,800 square feet of this building. Uh, Cambridge Stone operates a stone cutting business. Um, it cuts stone into countertops, uh, with granite, what have you, and sells them to showrooms where an end user can then come and see them. So this is not open to the public. If I'm looking for new kitchen countertops, I can't just walk in there. That's not what it is. They're selling it to, um, to showrooms. Um, in December of 2022, the town board amended the zoning code to now require a special permit from this board to allow stone cutting in an industrial zone. Prior to that, stone cutting was an as of right use and in the industrial zone, and I'm sure the board is familiar with you know, various other uh, stone cutting businesses in the town of Babylon. The criteria for the special permit is very clear, and I do have our architect, Brian Fisher, with me tonight. Um, he did submit plans that comply with the requirements and address the concerns of the town. I was able to get the um, DEC memo, the town DEC memo, um, and it does acknowledge that the plans from Mr. Fisher that are dated January 18th, 2023, include uh, dust collector, water reclamation, strip door curtains, which keep the dust contained, um, and a trench drain system to manage wastewater and dust emissions. Um, if we look at the criteria for a special permit, there are some certain, um, certain things that need to be in place, certain machinery that needs to be in place, and we do feel, and I'll, I'll have Mr. Fisher walk you through the floor plan so that you can see where these things are, but we do feel that our uh, wastewater from the stone cutting machinery, so as you may or may not know, this is new to me, but when you cut stone, um, you need to use water to keep it to cool down. Um, and so you need some place usually to uh, have the water go. You don't want it going um, outside the premises. You wanna contain it and you wanna have it um, recycled. Um, so there's different machinery that can do that. Um, and we are adequately capturing, containing, and recycling the water um, within the premises. Um, we are having uh, trenches throughout um, along with drainage. Um, there'll be no discharge of wastewater into the exterior stormwater drainage system. Um, and we are also having an engineered air filtration and duct system to capture all dust emissions. And again, I'm gonna have Mr. Fisher um, come up and just kind of briefly walk you through the floor plan. Name and address for the record, please. Brian Fisher, 80 Sherwood Avenue, Farmingdale, New York. And do you affirm to tell the truth? Yes. Yeah, if you could walk us through that, I would appreciate that, yeah, especially sure. so, where the water is going and stuff like that. 
Um, most of the, the activity really goes on in the back of the building, which is on the north side. So there's a stone cutting saw, a big table that the slabs go on, and the saw goes in any direction it needs to, and it uses water. So the, that room uh, has a trench around the perimeter. It doesn't have a trench now. So the water was really going everywhere. So this trench, the water pitches to the trench as it's cutting, and I understand it uses about five gallons a minute when it cuts, not really a lot. So um, as it gets to the trench, it goes to a pit. And the pit has a, sump, has a pump in it that pumps it to the um, water reclamation uh, process. So, and this is called a, um, it's called a, mist, a mistrail four that change, that, that takes the water and it, it doesn't connect to, to the outside at all. So it takes the water and it can, and it can um, filter, um, I'm sorry, here I lost my, uh, it, it can filter almost 5,000 gallons an hour. But it, it's not gonna do nearly that because we're only using about five to 10 gallons a minute. So it's, it's way oversized for what it needs to do. So the water, the, the sludgy water goes in, into the pit, the sump pump pumps it up and does its process and the, and the sediment goes into these bags. If you look on the plan, you can see these bags that hang down and it's like a vacuum. So when these bags fill up, you take the bag and you cart it away. You put it in a, a legal refuse or however it goes, it gets taken away. But that water goes back into the system and it just gets reused and reused. So it really doesn't use a lot of water. Um, I, have a, I had a water bill from the, from the landlord and he only uses about 80 gallons a day. So it's really for the, for the men to, to use the bathroom. So the same water is just being used over and over, which then it wasn't, it was just kind of going all over. As far as the, the airflow, it's a, um, it's an air system that can, it can take on an immense amount of uh, cubic feet. The, the building, the space is only 32,000 cubic feet in this room. And, and the, um, the machine can, can take on like 700,000 cubic feet. So it's really not, it, it's oversized. So it's, it's gonna have no problem taking it out. And uh, so it's really only like 4% of, of what this machine can do. Um, I think that's basically it. So if you had any questions, okay. uh, hopefully I didn't uh, no, I think you confuse you enough. No, I think you answered most of enough. what our questions were in regards to how that was going to work and you know, how it was going to be uh, the byproduct is you know, gotten rid of um, and evidently talk to our, our uh, DEC person here, and they tell me that it's not hazardous waste, so it basically can just go into the garbage after it's done. So yes. as long as it's not going out into the sewer systems or the drainage systems in the town. It's not. Uh, it's, we were talking earlier, actually, about this just a little bit, that, you know, there's even a wet cut sewer, just, you know, it, it, there's a lot of gunk that builds up, basically, is what it boils down to. So, you know, that's, that was the, the biggest concern, really. Sure. So the air and the water, that's fantastic. <coughs> Much like when you use a saw, you create sawdust. And when you're cutting stone or anything, marble, whatever it is they might be doing, you create what's a, a silica. And it builds up and it's, it, it'll block and clog anything. You said this is being collected into bags? Well, the, the, air, the air filtration system is a, that's the Mistrail 4, that's what it's called. So it uses water, it's like a waterfall. So with the, this particular space that he's in, it's not the whole space, it's the back area, which is about um, 2,000 square feet. And the, the flap doors keep everything from going outside into his office and, and the stock room. So this system collects the dust and Filters Not it the with dust. water. Once the water hits it, it becomes it becomes wet, just like everything else. It sinks. It's going to collect into wherever the water's going. 
You need something to trap it, to contain it, to filter it, to collect it. To I thought that's what you explained to, me, to us when you said that. Well, that that's where the. Because what's going to happen is it'll clog everybody. The whole it'll clog everything. The whole building. You know, it'll build up. It'll build up. It'll build up because it's yeah, it's I, liquid I rock. Get, I it's, get your reply. Well, it's got to be. It's got to be removed. It's got to be taken out, it can't, be, it can't just lay in the pipe or a trench or something, it'll just build up and, and uh, well, the, I've worked with a wet saw, I've done this, right. I know I know about, you know, I've experienced what I'm talking about, and then uh, not anywhere near on this scale, but um, you know, you, you could be leading to bigger problems. Well, there would have to be a daily maintenance of this, so you'd have to That's move, move, the, uh, move the sludge into the, and, not just leave it one day after the other. It's kind of like a kitchen. You got to clean up every day and take it away and, and properly maintain it so it's not building up <coughs> day after day. How wide are these trenches in this back room? The trenches are six inches wide and they're about, I believe, eight inches yeah. deep. Yeah, show me on that. Yeah, it's quite true. Yeah, six inches, you're not going to yeah, show me that. Yeah, yeah because there's going to be a buildup in those trenches that. Mr. Shepard was just alluding to after a while, so I mean, They're like a clogged artery, you know. Yeah. Sooner mm -hmm. or later, it's, nothing's going to go through it. And, then, right. and in the meantime, what's doing is it's going all the way through. Thanks, Joe. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the neighbor yeah. Yeah. or your other tenants are going to yeah, uh, are going to start that. having problems. Yeah. Well, I I did speak with a company that does this. That's all they do. He just does this, and this was his recommendation on the trenches and the two and the two systems, which is the air purification and and the water reclamation. This is what they do. It, of course, it needs maintenance. You can't just stay after the day and leave it there because it gets hard. So it, it needs to be maintained on a daily basis. I would imagine it like needs to be hosed down or something every day because you're going to get a buildup. Is what it boils down yes. to. <laughs> Certainly, we're no experts on this, but we're just going off of you know doing some homeowner stuff and stuff like that, so. <clears throat> so each system has, it that it reclaims, and the sediment and the byproduct of the filtration system for the water and the air are reclaimed and disposed of. Yes. On a daily basis or whatever, well, whenever recommend, whenever whatever's requires, recommended. Yes. Okay. So the product's gonna be removed. Like in other words, Mr. Fisher drew it. He didn't design it. Right. right? So, <laughs> you know, he's, he's good, but he's not that good. So they had to consult with this, is this the Italian company? That yes. It's a very fun. special company that does this. I can't even tell you if the other stone cutters in the town do this. Hopefully they do, but we wanted to do it right based on what the special permit requires. So looking at all the factors that are required, you, in, you investigated what system would be necessary, and mm -hmm. that professional engineering company said, this is what you do, and then he laid it on the plans. Okay. So it's not like something he just thought up and drew no, up. No, I, yeah, I, 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 think, I, just I think you did a good job explaining it. Yeah. Also, <laughs> you know, so. also um, when I had just done this, before I went to the building department or anywhere else, I sent it to the DEC, town DEC, and he said, this is exactly what we're looking for. So he kind of gave it a, a, a nod on that, on what he wanted to see. Very good. Thank All you. Right. Any other questions from the board? Would anyone like to be heard on this application? For the record, there are none. So we're going to. Well, yeah. Approval. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, if, if we were to approve this, we have to wait for fire marshal first, but we so, would recommend a one-year approval just to, you know, make sure. Sure. So I just have a question, though, regarding fire marshal, um, because these inspections were dated back in November, uh, November 2nd, um, and at the bottom of one of them, it does say that they won't issue a fire prevention permit until the facility is brought up to code into the building department with approved certificate of occupancy. There's no way my client can get that or do that without, like somebody's gotta go first. So if we don't, the building department won't, first of all, he's unfortunately barred from even being in the unit. So he can't go in there and do anything in the unit until he has a permit. Can't get a permit until we get by you guys. If you say we can't get by you until we do fire marshal, we're kind of in, we're, we're in the filtration system basically. 
We'll, we'll work that Thank out. Thank you. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. But yes, he agrees to the conditions in the DEC memo. That's not a problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's closed and reserved uh, in these fire markets. Maybe you could do one or the other. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank Have a good night. You, you too. Next application is application 23030 of Strange Stars, LLC, property located in Farmingdale. Good evening. I'm Glenn Graham with Graham Associates, Planning and Design 256 Orinoco Drive, Brightwaters. Okay. We are the design firm behind the plans before you. Do you affirm to tell the truth? Yes, I do. Okay. For the record, we have a planning division memo dated April 12, Environmental control memo dated April 18, 2023. If this were approved, it would need a negative declaration. Fire marshal. We're still missing fire marshal. We got the fire marshal. Was that number nine? We got fire marshal. Okay, so that's not missing anymore. Yeah. Just read that in. We have a fire marshal's report uh, dated April 13th, 2023. No violations noted. Uh, Suffolk County planning memo dated April 7th, 2023. Decision of local determination. Take no position for or against. Survey by all county surveyors. I do not see the date. Yeah. <laughs> Tax map acting as an area map. A interior alterations for this. It's a site plan from Graham Associates dated 120-23. So the site plan. Package, first floor plan, proposed floor plan, and existing partial south elevation. And anything else? Chairman, we have 15 photographs. Okay. Okay. What would you like to tell us about the application? Uh, before I begin, I'd just like to introduce a team of people behind me. Uh, I don't claim to be an expert in this industry. I do practice uh, architecture and have laid out the floor plans, but I do have uh, cannabis experts with us tonight. Uh, first off, maybe you could stand when I s introduce you. We do have the landlord's attorney with us. Uh, that's Joe Picone. His attorney is Philip Siegel. Um, <laughs> we have the applicants from Strain Stars LLC. Uraj Singh is a board member. We have Kalmadeep Singh. He's going to be the dispensary manager. Yasmin Yar, who's the CFO. And Tushar, uh, Tushar Malik, who's also a board member. Um, furthermore, we have Mike McQueenie, who's a partner with Foleg Hogue, Foley Hogue, who's a cannabis regulatory counsel. It's uh, one of our experts in the field. We also have uh, Greg Levine, who's a senior vice president of Mercury LLC. He does public affairs and government relations. Uh, the location of this facility or proposed facility is at 1815 Route 110. It's just south of Gaza Boulevard on the east side of Route 110. It's next to Ashley Furniture and across from Mattress Firm. 
Uh, for the record, we have read planning staff and all the comments, and we have no opposition to them. The property is G zone, and it does meet all the requirements of 213-166. We are seeking a special exception for a cannabis dispensary. Um, as far as the parking relaxation is concerned, there was a prior grant in 1984 for 140 parking spaces. Uh, we are seeking a reduction from 290 to 174. I've been on this property a number of times. I do work for the Pacone family, uh, not just for this applicant, and I've, it, the parking lot looks much like the picture behind you. It is fairly empty. The proposed hours of operation of this facility would be Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., Sunday, 10 a.m. through 7, and that's to help accommodate any parking associated with the bar restaurant at the facility. We do intend to have five employees on staff as well as a third-party security team. Uh, we understand that if the board grants this application and we get our building permit, this might be the first cannabis facility to open on Long Island. We are expecting it to be busy. However, to eliminate any opening problems, anything, it's gonna be essentially RSVP until things calm down a little bit. Um, we would propose extra security for the first month or as needed and would be willing to work with the town, however, to keep any nuisance or overcrowding of the site to happen. Um, I can walk you through the floor plan if you're interested, but essentially the way it's gonna operate, you would walk into yeah, great, thank you for pulling that up. The floor plan behind you. You enter through a secured lobby area. Well, that's where security would check you in. They believe you have to take submit your license before you're allowed into the facility. So there would be a small waiting room, as, and like I said in the beginning, it's gonna be RSVP. Once you've been accepted by security, You'd be brought into the main retail space where there's display cases and some countertops for the product. It's gonna be a one-on-one -on -one situation where you know, a, a, a person, an employee of Strain Stars would help you as the customer, and then they could go in the back. There is a, a room where they would fulfill your order, and there is also a vault at night Everything gets put into that vault and locked up. There is nothing left in the display cases. With inside that vaulted room, there is another safe. So it's double protection besides our security cameras and everything else. So it's not like someone can just break in and smash some cabinets open and get access to it. It is highly regulated by the state. One thing I'd like to also note is we have one entrance in and once the, the sale of the product is done, you would exit out the side door. There is no on-site consumption. Uh, I'm sure the owners can elaborate if you have any further questions, but, but yeah. I kind of can concludes my pr presentation, and okay. if you have any. So the business hours that you gave us, you would agree to maintain those hours? On, on Sunday, can we cut that back on Sunday? <clears throat> um, yeah. yeah. Five o'clock. Is that okay with you guys? Five. Yes. Okay. And you'll agree to maintain those hours, right? Yeah. And we understand that the special exception permit would be only for a year, so. Right. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of eyes on the facility for that first year. Um, you already agreed that there would be no consumption on on site. <clears throat> yes. Um, also, talk to us about the uh, across access agreement with the uh, the, the other uh, tenants there for parking. Yeah, I've spoken other... to Joe Pacone, the property owner, and he has no problem with it. They do own all those three lots. Okay. When the restaurant was uh, going for a permit, 
and granted that parking relief, it was submitted as a full site plan with all three lots. So we're not changing any of that. Okay. And we would be willing to put that further into writing. Yeah, if you could do that, that's yep. we would like that. Um, that's kind of it for me. I guess, uh, oh yeah, who holds the license? It, I believe it's, why don't you screen stars? Yeah, hi, uh, my name is Yabraj Singh and I'm part of the team at Strange Stars. Okay. You can, you can continue, but just yeah. make sure you get um, it to her. The license is held by the... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I need your uh, address, too. Oh, Yabraj saying 81 James Street, Hicksville. Okay. And you affirm to tell the truth? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Um, the license is held by uh, our corporation, Strange Stars LLC, and it was awarded to us back in November of 2022. And you're the? Yeah, I'm CEO. CEO? Yeah. OK. Thank you. So the way I, you explained it, and I guess we don't need to go into that that much further, but there's a waiting room. People will be let into the waiting room. They'll be escorted into the area where they can pick up or look at or you know, uh, buy what they're going to purchase. Uh, and then they're going to go out the side door. That's correct. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation in the retail area. Okay. And Somebody's going to help each person that comes in, basically? Yeah. Okay. And we yeah, you, we have, uh, as you see behind you, there's five points of sale. So there will be a total of 10 people in that space at any given time. And then once the purchase is made, they're escorted out the side door. Okay. Is there any way of controlling the use of the product in the parking lot or around the area or? Well, yes, we're gonna have security both inside and outside. Okay. I think long term though, when things calm down, it's gonna be the same way as if you preventing someone from drinking beer at a 7-Eleven, but yeah, we're good. There is no on-site consumption allowed by the state and we'll do our best to enforce that. If there were problems, would you put the security back into effect or the extra security back into effect if that yes, became the, a problem? There is going to be a third party security team full time at this. It's not just them running it, it's security managed by a third party company. So, yes, that, that's not just for the first two weeks, that's permanent. Okay. Yeah. Are they armed or unarmed security? <laughs> that I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Unarmed. So it's a combination of both. Okay. Uh, do you need like a medical card or anything, or is this just anybody no, can come off the street? No, this is anybody can walk off the street and purchase. Over yes. Okay. Over 21. Okay. And how does this? You said this RSVP. And what? Is, can you explain that a little bit? They're going to do that through their own uh, Facebook and social media. It's going to be invite for as long as needed. I assume the first week or two. So that's the only way you're going to be able to get there is by invitation. Yeah, we're going to notify the public that you just can't walk in the door for that first few days. It, we'll put a time limit on once things calm down. Yeah. Yeah. We're really yeah, trying. When is the expected grand opening? Well, hopefully this board would approve things tonight and we could move on <laughs> so to the on billing us. department. <laughs> I have construction plans ready to file tomorrow. It's. Uh, Good for town of Babylon. It's good for the applicants. It's good for Long Island, and uh, we're anxious to open. So, it could happen as fast <coughs> as uh, the town could facilitate it. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Would anyone like to be heard on this application? I'm assuming everybody's with you. <coughs> and they do agree to cross yes, they yes. agree to the cross access, and you will get that in writing for us, right? Yes. I'm good with that. It's yeah. good for the town. Yeah. Mm. I'll make a motion to. Thanks. I'll make a motion to adopt a negative declaration on application 23030. Second. All in favor? Aye. I will make a motion to approve application 23030 for a period of one year. Second. 
with the recommended con conditions as far as the hours, the security, and that also the cross access agreement. Second. Great. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Good luck. Good luck. If anybody would like an RSVP, you can come. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks. Appreciate your help. Good luck. Oh, just hand this up. oh yeah. <laughs> CDLs. Yeah, you guys. Are... <coughs> oh, okay. oh, yeah, where is that? What am I supposed to say? Okay, that concludes the board schedules, hearings, and tonight's live streaming on YouTube broadcast. The meeting remains open. The board will continue.